talk about climate solutions, I don't think we need any emphasis on the problem. But the solutions that we are often offered uh, are rather chopped up, piecemeal, and increasingly we're offered what are called geoengineering solutions, like the ones illustrated here. Uh, <clears throat> kind of end of pipe solutions on a planetary scale. I find these pretty scary, both because there's so much we don't know about how the planet works, which is partly how we got in this trouble in the first place, and partly for the deeper reason that trying to fix one thing usually unfixes other things. We have a story about this that is our guiding parable at Rocky Mountain Institute. It's a story from Borneo where in the early 50s, the Dayak people had malaria, the World Health Organization had a solution, they would spray DDT all over, and they did. So this killed the mosquitoes, the malaria went down, so far so good. But problems, side effects started to pop up. For example, the roofs of people's houses started to fall down on their heads because the DDT had also killed tiny parasitic wasps that had previously controlled the thatch-eating caterpillars, which then proliferated, munched up the thatching, so the colonial government gave people sheet metal roofs, but then people were driven nuts by lack of sleep because of the noise of the tropical rain on the tin roofs at night. Meanwhile, the DDT poison bugs were being eaten by geckos, which were eaten by cats, and as the DDT built up in the food chain, it killed the cats, but then without the cats, the rats flourished and multiplied and soon the World Health Organization was threatened with potential outbreaks of typhus and plague, which it had created, and was thereby obliged to call up RAF Singapore and ask them to come conduct Operation Cat Drop, parachuting large numbers of live cats into Borneo. I am not making this up. Uh, so what this tells us is if you don't understand how things are connected, quite often the cause of problems is solutions. And, of course, at RMI, we're trying to understand and harness those hidden connections to turn the cause of solutions into solutions so we can solve or, better still, avoid a problem in a way that avoids a lot of other problems at the same time without making new ones so we don't have to go parachuting more cats. Well, the problems that we're facing now are a lot more challenging and a lot more intimately intertwined than malaria in Borneo. Um, I don't need to emphasize what's going on with climate, you know, glaciers disappearing, sea level rising, ocean chemistry changing, ice-free Arctic Ocean coming at us, and so on. But what we normally see, unless you go to places like Greenland, are the issues right close to home uh, with uh, <coughs> volatile oil prices, increasing geopolitical tensions and instabilities, often related to oil. Um, and questions like, you know, would we have put half a million troops in Kuwait if Kuwait just grew broccoli, or is there maybe some other connection going on there? Uh, and then, of course, as we send uh, so much treasure abroad that uh, the oil exporters could now buy General Motors with three days' revenue, uh, <clears throat> this starts to show up in the value of our currency and the vitality of our economy. But the solutions that we're usually given in this soundbite world uh, just address each problem separately, like spraying DDT in Borneo. And if you think about solutions separately, you end up with short, simple, probably wrong things like, well, if we just do geoengineering or if we just do carbon sequestration, or if we just do even something very worthwhile like carbon pricing, uh, that's all we need to do. And all we need to do, the economy, is consume more. And then don't worry, there are various energy solutions and various security solutions, except, that, of course, that all these things have hidden connections. And when those connections go to work, because they act whether we perceive them or not, uh, then we end up creating lots more and, le and, and more intractable problems. And the more we try single-purpose, narrowly framed solutions that make more problems, the more we lose hope because we're caught in this maze and there's no way out. I think that it is becoming more and more obvious <clears throat> that only a whole system view uh, taking account of those rich interconnections and put, turning them to advantage can create real solutions 
solutions that are practical and profitable and will really last.